and welcome to No Option Antics. What we're going to be looking at today are basic risk graphs. And these will be the six basic risk graphs, and we're going to look at them at the point of expiration. So the first basic risk graph I want to show you is I want to show you a risk graph of long stock. Now, why do people look at risk graphs? Well, what they do is they show in the, the risk and the reward in every trade. Looking at the risk graph of long stock, and for those of you that have never looked at a risk graph before, what you will see is on the vertical axis, you will see the amount of money that you will make, uh, either in a profit or a loss form. Uh, you'll see that there's a zero line here, and the zero line represents your break-even point. And along the bottom axis, the horizontal axis, you can see the stock prices. Now, if we look at being long the stock or owning the stock at $45, we can see at the $45 mark down here, we have neither made nor lost money. If the stock goes up $5, up to $50, well, we can see at that point there, if we follow our graph over to the left, that yes, indeed, we've made $5. Uh, same thing on the other direction. If the stock goes from 45 down to 40, if we draw an imaginary line up from where the $40 stock price is until it intersects with our graph, we can see at that point that we have lost $5. So on the long stock, we're looking at making money as the stock goes up, but unfortunately we lose money as the stock goes down. The opposite of being long stock or owning stock is being short stock. And what short stock represents is that you have sold stock up front with the hopes of the stock going down to later purchase it back for less money than what you originally sold it for, hopefully. So we can see in this, this graph here, this is being short the stock at $50. So if we go at the stock being at $50 and we draw an imaginary line to where it intersects with our graph, we can see at this point here, we have not made, we have not lost money. Uh, if the stock were to drop down $5, down to $45, and we followed our graph all the way up to where we intersect, we can see that at this point here, we've made $5. On the other side of the coin, if the stock had gone up to $55, and we see where we've intersected on our graph, we can see we would have lost $5. The reason being is that if we sold the stock originally for $50, and later on we had to purchase the stock back, if the stock were to go to $55, well, we'd have a $5 loss if we originally sold something for $50, later had to purchase it for $55. So that's long and short stock. Let's look at the options. Here's a, a risk graph of a long call, the 45 call, and let's say that you paid $5 for the long 45 call. And again, remember, long just means ownership. So if we look at the stock down at $40, we can see that we would have lost the entire $5 that we paid for this option. If we look at the stock at 45, again, we've lost the whole $5 that we paid for the position. With the stock going up to 50, we'll see that where our graph intersects, we have broken even. Why? Well, we have the right. When we own a long call, we have the right to buy the stock. And in this case, we have the right to buy the stock at $45. If we paid $5 for the right, first thing we need to do is recoup the $5. So once we recoup the $5, we find that this 45 call with the stock at 50, well, that option is worth $5. If we paid $5, we've broken even at that point. But if, let's say the stock goes up to $55. Well, the 45 call that we bought is now worth $10. Because if we have the right to buy the stock for 45, and everybody else has to pay 55 for the stock, there's $10 of what they call real value or intrinsic value. So we get the $10 of real value in the option, but unfortunately we paid five, so it looks at this point that we've only made $5 of profit. And we can see that we've limited our risk in having the long call, but what we've done with a long call is we've given ourselves unlimited profit potential because as the stock continues to go higher and higher and higher, we will continue to make more and more money based upon the fact that we have this long call. So that's being long the call or being the call buyer. 
Well, in order for there to be a call buyer, there has to be somebody on the other side of the trade. That would be someone who's a call seller, or they will be short the call, which means they have sold that right. The call gives you the right to buy something. Well, if you sold the call, you've given somebody else the right to buy it. Here's the, a, a, a picture of a short 45 call, meaning that we sold the right for someone else to buy stock at 45. We have received a $5 credit, meaning the person paid us $5 for them to have the right to buy the stock. So we take that credit in. So the most we can make here, as we can see by the risk graph, is the $5 that we have taken in. Now, as the stock starts going up, we start giving back some of that money we've taken in. Because if the stock goes to 50, someone else has the right to buy the stock for 45. Well, we have to be able to replace that stock at $45. Well, we can't do that. We'd have to buy it at 50 because that's where the stock is trading now. So since we received $5 initially but had to pay out an additional $5 from where we have the where we're forced to sell the stock at, we break even. And we can see that as the stock goes higher and higher, we lose more and more money because we are forced to sell stock to somebody for $45. So those are the short calls. Let's look at the puts now. Here is a risk graph of a long put, owning a put. And here is the $50 put that we're purchasing for $5. So you can see that by the risk graph here, and now we're starting to get an idea, that the most we can lose when we buy something is whatever we've paid for it. And we see if the stock drops from $50 down to $45, that we will just break even. And the reason being is we have paid $5 for this right to sell stock, because a put gives us the right to sell the stock. So we have just broken even at the $45 mark. If the stock continued down to $40, the 50 put that we own gives us the right to sell stock at 50. With the stock at $40, we have what's known as $10 of real value because we can sell stock at 50. If the stock were trading at 40, everyone else would only be able to sell their stock at 40. So there is a, a, an inherent right there and a, uh, an inherent value in that. So that 50 put is going to be worth $10. Here's the problem. We already paid 5 so it looks like at this point here, we would have made $5 of profit. And as you can see, as the stock goes down and down in price, the value of our put goes up because we have the ability to sell the stock for a higher price than what it's trading. Remember, if there are put buyers, there are also put sellers and being short the put or selling the put, what that does is it gives somebody else the right to sell us stock. Now here's a short $50 put that we're receiving a $5 credit. So again, the most we can make on something we've sold is the amount that we've sold it for, or in this case, the $5. If the stock were to go to $45, that 50 put would have $5 of real value. The problem is we didn't buy it, we sold it. So we have to be able to purchase the stock, or we're going to be forced, I should say, to purchase the stock for $50, even though the stock's trading at $45. Well, if you were forced to purchase stock for $50, and now the stock is only worth $45, how much money would you lose? Of course, that would be $5. But you took in $5 initially, so at that point there, you broke even. And you can see as you go down further and further in stock price along here, you're losing more and more money for the simple fact that you have sold an option and you no longer have any control. So those are our six basic risk graphs. You should join us for further education on our website at nooptionantics.com. And we give it that name for a specific reason. There's no messing around here. This is real education by real trading professionals. You can email us at info at nooptionantics.com or visit our website to see what other services we provide. Thank you very much.